say we already know why, but for a little bit larger audience that doesn't, you know, talk a little bit first about sort of your biography and what brought you to the commission, how long you've been there, but give us a little bit of biography. Well, you know, I, I served this great country of ours in the U.S. Army Reserve uh, for six years. I came out of the service and became a state trooper with the Florida Highway Patrol for 11 years. Uh, and then I was uh, blessed to be appointed by the city commission uh, to the city of Emmy when uh, the city was going for its most pivotal time in history. I mean, remember those days. Mm -hmm. City commissioners being uh, taken out of city hall and handcuffed city mm -hmm. managers. You know, I, I ran on the platform of anti-corruption. State uh, was running the city, basically. Right? Basically an oversight board at that time, yeah. Uh, you know, it was... It was you came on board with that? I came in, I came on board in 1998. So you were just city, after the Yeah, the one. city was already declared bankrupt with a $68 million deficit and oversight board placed by Governor Charles at that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, my opponent was there uh, during that time. I believe that he was uh, a part of the problem. And, and basically, the governor put an oversight board because the commission couldn't get out of that jail. And I ran on a uh, reform platform, and uh, my track record speaks for itself. You know, I, when I first got in, uh, I put together the uh, the 2001 Development Summit that brought in new developers to the city, brought in uh, new opportunities for the city, based showcasing the city as a city that we can do business with, simplifying the process, and we made significant improvements uh, during those those times. Also, my record of reform on Bayfront Park. I took over Bayfront Park Trust after J. L. Plummer, and uh, you know. When I first got there, I just didn't like what was going on, and I called for an audit, and uh, that audit uh, uh, ended up having the executive director of the Bayfront Park being uh, arrested, and some people doing business with the park also got arrested. And you know, when I left there, I turned it around. It was a trust that was making money instead of losing money. As a matter of fact, it, it did so well that we gave uh, half a million dollars to the city parks department, $100,000 per district for a park program. So. You know, the CRA, uh, and CRA was also the reformer there, of course, there was a, uh, the CRA was uh, out of control, there were some commissioners that thought it was a piggy bank, mm -hmm. uh, and, and through the, the actions that we took, I also called for an audit of the CRA, of course, you know what the outcome is, and today the CRA is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, it's investing tip money into redevelopment of poor communities in the city. Uh, so, you know, my track record speaks for itself, I have a, a track record of a reformer in the city, and prosperity in the city. Why run for mayor? You had a nice, comfortable commission seat, and uh, so ultimately, what was the thing that you sat there and said, in my heart of hearts, talk to the family? I'm, I'm Michael, let me tell you, it's not a good time to be a mayor in the city of Miami. We have some tough challenges ahead of us. And you know, I believe that out of crisis, I could uh, create opportunities for the city of Miami. Yeah, you're right. I, I had to think about it. I remember sitting down with my family and decide whether I was running for the city. But you know, we have so much invested in the city. This city has such great potential. For and I think this current administration has made significant improvements for our city to keep the city moving forward. 2021, the Museum of Science, great things that we've done for the city. You know, I hate, I hate to have to go back to the days when the city was a banana republic, but we were ashamed to say that we were living in Miami, that we were a part of Miami. Miami is, is paradise, all not paradise for everyone who's stuck in the wrong times. But I think that through my leadership and my hard work, I can bring prosperity to the city. And it's all about prosperity, because I believe prosperity can make, makes us better even. What makes you worry we're going to go back to that, quote, era of banana? Well, if we don't have the right leadership in the city, and now it's about leadership, it's about having a leader that can lead the city forward, to get this economy moving again, get people jobs, go to Washington and lobby Washington and the Obama administration to bring down federal, do federal dollars and also the state. You're going to need a mayor that, can, that, that has to do that. I think with different times you have different policies. We're certainly not going to see much development in the city for quite some time. So I think now we have to start thinking outside the box and really go out to Washington and, and Tallahassee and try to bring as much uh, uh, money that we can to the city to get this economy moving again. Why can you do that better than your opponent? Well, I have the experience. I have the experience in, in Tallahassee lobbying when I was the president of the Florida PBA. Uh, I have great relationships with, with uh, senators. I have, uh, I have the experience to do it. Uh, I'll tell you this much. My, great ex my greatest concern in this campaign is that my opponent, uh, which you know has spoken about transparency and honesty, well, you know he hasn't been very honest with the public. Uh, certainly, I question his uh, five thousand uh, dollars net worth. I question his practice not paying taxes, and still, uh, as a commissioner, not paying taxes for about six years, and in that commission approving a budget, asking taxpayers to pay taxes. So there's a lot of things that he hasn't uh, explained, and those are, those are the things that I think uh, I'm proud to say that the 10 years that I've been here, 
I have never been investigated by the state attorney's office. I have never been investigated by the Ethics Commission, and I certainly haven't paid my taxes. So it's my commitment to the people of Miami to get this city moving again, and that's why I'm running for mayor. Rightly or wrongly, and I know you sometimes bristle over this notion, but you have been called somebody very supportive of the mayor, and Tomas Regalado has positioned himself as anti-development. Uh, how do you characterize that when that kind of well, you know, assessment is made? My record speaks for itself. I mean, I am an independent uh, voter there. I've been the chair for three years. Look, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm going to support any good legislation that comes from anybody as long as it's good for the people of Miami. Unfortunately, my opponent cannot do that. Every time that there's good legislation, he is the noble. Perfect example, Miami 21. So just just to address that, let me just give you, because I think we've had to clear that uh, in many times that we've talked to reporters. Look, the last budget that we approved, I voted against it, and I was a chair, and I voted against it for, for a variety of reasons. One was that the budget that was presented did not do sufficient to address the next year's budget, which was this year, in which we were faced with a $118 million deficit. I made it very clear. I said, this administration is going to have to cut more so we can take care of the issue today. What's happening here in government is that we continue to kick the can and put a bandit on a fatal wound, hoping that next year we'll take care of it. How do you fix that? Well, I, my, my commitment to the people is that my number one issue here is to resolve the pension crisis that we have in the city. You know, my opponent is being uh, endorsed by special interests. He's got all the units. Uh, I don't have that support. My support is my commitment to the voters of Miami to take the pension system and uh, transform it, uh, change it, put it correctly, where we, we break away from defined benefits into a 401A, which is similar to a 401K, but it's the, the type of retirement that government should have. That's going to save taxpayers millions of dollars. You realize that this year alone, we have to pay $101 million towards our pensions. Our pensions have increased from 2001 to present day by 400%. They're not sustainable. They're going to bankrupt the city. I've made it very clear that that is my number one commitment. And within 60 days, I'm putting together a, a Blue Ribbon Test uh, Committee to address that. It's going to be uh, uh, economists, it's going to be labor attorneys, and the city's finance committee to sit down and work with the administration and all the commissions to address that. As a matter of fact, uh, yesterday in the commission meeting, we passed some of my legislation pertaining to reform, where uh, new elected officials now do not have uh, defined uh, benefits. In other words, they're done with uh, a retirement now. And I made it very clear. Years ago, I, I, I felt that it was appropriate. It was appropriate because commissioners were making six, uh, $6,000 or 5000 in the city. So we needed to have a pension system to entice people to run. But nowadays, uh, thanks to the voters of the city of Miami, you know, we, we get a $50,000 salary. Excuse me. I, I, I got the man. I, I really. Like